here is my oil pan that I'm gonna be <laughs> modifying today. And you can see that this oil pan, first of all, I do not take ownership for this damage. This is off of a donor engine. <laughs> so um, you can see that it is severely indented here. So this is gonna impact my ability to have this fully full of oil. That, I mean, it's clearly not that much, but it's enough that I'm gonna fix it. And then I'm also going to remove this plug and I'm gonna weld a bung here, an AN fitting, so that I can actually have the turbo drain go to right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and begin by drilling out this, this oil baffle. You can see that this thing is tacked on. This is the drill bit that I'm gonna be using to drill out the spot welds of that little oil baffle. And I got this for $5 at Harbor Freight. And let me tell you, I love these drill bits. First of all, they are cheap. <laughs> But second of all, there are two drill bits in one. This is definitely still usable, but you can see how the teeth, the little serrated edges there, uh, have been, you know, damaged from use. And this side is extremely sharp. So I'm just gonna go ahead, flip it over, screw it back on, and I've, I've got a fresh drill bit all over again. So that's pretty sweet. This top part is also spring-loaded. So on the back end, is actually pretty cool. You can adjust like spring tension, kind of. So this comes undone, and somewhere in there is a little spring. <laughs> There, see that? I don't know. It's it's kind of neat. It's worth way more than five dollars. I feel like these must be made in China. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna start with this one. This is really thin, so I'm just taking it super slow because I don't want to cut through you know, the actual oil pan itself. Not that that would be a huge deal if I did. Cause I could weld it shut, but I don't want to make any extra work for myself. <laughs> I don't want to make it any harder than it already is. All right. Getting, oh, oh, we're getting there. Oh, we're getting there. I'm feeling like that's it. We'll see. Yep, there we go. Okay, we are so free there. So <laughs> I'm gonna continue on the uh, the easy roll, and I'm gonna do this one next. So this is a little tippy. So I gotta. I don't have the proper size wood. So to keep the pressure on. All right, that was there. <gasps> so stressful. <laughs> I really don't want to go through. All right, so now the challenge is gonna be all these guys, because that is not an easy angle to get to. So, all right, we'll see. disgusting so I gave it a nice little chemical bath over the weekend before spray washing it and sandblasting it. Now that the oil pan is clean, it's much easier to see all the density to be addressed while also not tracking sludged up oil all over the shop and the tools while I stir it out, which I will be doing with this blunt chisel and some blocks of wood. I also managed to pound out all the dents in this pan with this mallet, aka engineer's hammer. Now for the bolt holes, which I'm guessing that these bolts were severely over torqued at one point, because look at how they have bowed up around every single hole. This would not make my pan seal very well. See here, you can see the before as well as the after. I found a piece of wood that fit underneath the lip of the pan perfectly and pounded every single one of them flat. And also, while I was examining them, I found another telltale sign of over torquing. This hole has a crack just above it. This is the factory oil cooler fitting on the oil pan. And, uh, Danny is much better welded than me. So Danny's gonna be TIG welding. I'm not a TIG welder extraordinaire. But look on the inside. Yes. That mm -hmm. is nice and thick. It's gonna be good. 
surface to weld to. Yeah, that is pretty cool. And one of the main things to express or whatever is everybody makes the mistake of putting this too low. It must be above the oil level. The turbo oil drain, right. Yeah, this is so going to be, people yeah, People wanna a... know, you know, where to put their <sighs> oil drain level. It has to be above the oil level. Everybody thinks, well, it's in the oil pan, no. Yep. If it's in underneath the oil, it'll smoke like crazy. Yes. A perfectly yes. brand new, most expensive turbo in the world cannot hold oil pressure. Right. Yes. Right, because it's just, it's a gravity drain. It's yeah, not meant to have, Yeah, everything, yep. when there's oil pressure going in, it'll push it out the bottom. It'll push it into the intake manifold. Right, right, yes. right. And then your turbo will be smoking, and then you're like, my seals are blown. So, so this actually <laughs> is, a, is a perfect place. Right, and we checked this already. I mean, not only it makes sense from the factory usage of this, it's already a return line, um, but also we like checked the dipstick and just made sure like where the level was going to be in the pan and that's also above it. So and even the, the placement. And this, yes. is a, this is tough over there. But this is cool because this is really thick and if you're trying to weld something this thick to something this thin, it can be done and we would most definitely do it. But this is like a, a lifesaver. Oh that's yeah. That's like, I mean, Toyota's over the top industrial. I mean, this is just so, I mean, they took the time. Think about it, as much metal as it costs to make that, no, no one else would have done that. I yeah. Mean, you know, even the oil drain. Yeah. And the oil drain is pretty cool. It even has an oil drain drain Yo. to get every <laughs> little bit of oil out of this pan. That is just it's so neat. It's going to be perfect. And look at the size of the drain, which is what you want. You don't want to restrict the oil going into your pan. Yep, that is a 10 AN. And it is the same as the fitting that um, I ordered from Boost Lab that's mm -hmm. made for my turbo. Yep. So the oil drain also is you don't want anything more than a 45. Mm -hmm. And you you don't want it to even to do a turn. You want to slope into it. You know, you want to drain with no effort at all. Yep. So we're going to accomplish that. This is cool. <laughs> okay, we'll get to it. That right there fits in there, and what we're trying to achieve is we just want it to come out just a little bit more so I can put a nice little beautiful well there, and no one's ever going to notice that it's well. It's going to look like it was just pressed on. Let's give it a try. We can always, we can always cut more. Look at how flush that is so now because we've got this factory washer on the back it's going to be welding something thick to something thick whereas on the other side it'd be you know just the thin well this is actually still pretty thick but still a relatably thinner oil pan to the thicker fitting and then we're going to use silicone bra and now this is thick and thick and I could use a regular a regular rod, uh, just a regular mild steel rod. Um, this is silicon bronze, so we're going to be brazing it, um, essentially. But we don't want to put that much heat in it anyway, and this will flow really good. So, so silicon bronze, you don't need it to be as hot? As hot. It doesn't have to get as hot because, so that... we're, because we're not actually melting the two pieces in together to weld in them. We're actually heating them up and the, the silicon bronze, which actually flows at a lower temperature, is flowing on the two pieces and sticking to them. So it is, you know, it's like it's brazing as opposed to welding. Wow, and that so. will lessen the chance of warpage, which I guess isn't so important with that one, but is more important with this one. With, with this one. And that one, it's so good and it's so thick. I could TIG weld it with that. That one is, came out so good, you could wire weld it. You could do anything with, with this. Um, like I said, I could even do a non-silicone bronze. I'm going to use silicone bronze over there. I'm going to use silicone bronze on that one little little crack up there. Yep. So I just thought, let's silicone bronze that as well. Why not? Oh, might as well. Why not? Okay. Whoa! And this is why Danny's welding it and not me. And I didn't use any filler rod after all. I just, it was so well pressed in. I used the little step that we had yep. to let that flow into it. That, that <gasps> was my filler rod. So I haven't used any anything. Now there's your oil drain. Oil will come in there and just, I mean, it'll want to go through there. It's so pretty. <laughs> but you're like, no, get me back into that pan. <laughs> it's okay. So they don't, they don't always come out that good. So when they do, it's like, okay. And it's, of course, it's the ones that no one ever sees. Yeah, it's I the know. Ones that you see that it's like, <sighs> crap. Okay, we've got that one done. Now what we're going to do here, I don't know if they've seen this or not. 
No, y'all haven't seen this yet, so let me tell you about it. So the oil drain plug area was all banged up and distorted, and while I felt like I could probably work it a little bit and return it back to homeostasis, I was worried that I may have problems with it sealing in the future. Now, 7M drain plugs tend to be notorious for leaking, so I decided that I preferred a more permanent solution. So I found this washer, I cleaned it up, and added it to my welding list. Shoto puts a nice little divot there at the bottom, and it's actually intentional to, yep. to get every little bit of oil out of this pan. I mean, it's just amazing. So there's a little hole in there that you can see from down there. Yep. So when you pull the drain plug, it actually gets every little drop of dirty oil out of it. Oh, yeah. Like it. But <laughs> that being said, that little divot there gets low, and then you have an oil leak right there. Yep, and so I'm going to over torque this and like reuse the gasket a bunch of times. And it's, it's not thin. fine. I take it. So, no. yes, so if you over torque it, it'll actually push that little wall in. Yes, exactly, you know? exactly. I wonder how many connecting rods were out just because of that little thing. But anyway, so to fix that, voila, we're going to have a nice new fitting there, a nice new flat spot that we're going to take weld around there. And then what are we going to do? It's going to seal. And it's so nice and flat. Oh, nice. Yep. This is actually a machine washer, it's not just a. A galvanized washer that you would have somewhere. I didn't mess around. No. So we're gonna do that, and then we can actually center it, and that will hold it in place. And then I'm gonna make it perfect with it. We'll, you know, you know, we'll Where's the perfect. micrometer? Yeah. We'll make, we'll make it perfect. <laughs> and that's it. And then we'll take well that. Yeah. And then one last thing. Danny taught me earlier. There is. He showed me a crack that I did not notice on something, and he was sort of like training my eye to notice cracks. So. Lo and behold, I noticed this one, which is probably going to be impossible to get on camera. You, I mean, you can see it a little bit. Yeah, no, you can see it. There's a teeny, teeny, teeny little crack there. Yep. And you saw it, yeah, you saw it from the, I was like, dang, girl. <laughs> I'm sure learning. Enough, Here yes, you go. All uh, my skills. <laughs> and, and, and there it is. You can almost see it a little better. And this didn't crack from you straightening the pan out. Because no, it, it I cracked before. Yeah, yeah. So, I, yep. so the, some of y'all go out there. Oh, well, you cracked it. No, it was cracked from somebody over tightening the bolt at one time. But you can see it there. And there's a gasket that goes there, or RTV and a bolt. Would it have ever done anything? Not. I was just impressed that you're training your eye to find cracks. That's what's you know, important. Yeah, because I was like amazed. Like, dang, girl, you actually did find one. <laughs> And you weren't, weren't looking, I've never seen a crack with a pan like that. But, no, me neither. But it, sure enough, it's a real crack. So we're going to go ahead and weld that as well. And I can even see, see the, how the washer is tightening up here? Yep. But not on this back side? Yeah, it's because it really was well, a, it's a little, little dinged work, up. But yeah. we're gonna, and then this we're going to use the fiber was We're going to use the fiber. Yes, exactly. This is, this one's a little dirty, but that's okay. I just brought it here for example. And uh, this is the factory washer. Now, when I remove that... It did not have this factory washer from whomever. I can't even remember who I got this from. This is off of one of my parts engines. Uh, there was a metal a crush knife. washer. So it might have been, and it would. It looked like it had been reused more than once. So, um, but combined with this reinforcement and this factory drain plug gasket, should be good to go. And no more leaks. They all leak. For those 7M motors, you all know that these always leak <laughs> and then we kind of have seen a little thing there with you know if you over tighten it you're, oh yeah you're, you're causing a leak definitely not, yes. oh yeah and, i uh, think that's exactly what happened here it was definitely over tightened before for sure that's better it's still driving me crazy are you comfortable with that i would oh my god can we here. just does anyone <laughs> out there let us know in the comments below does anyone see that off-centered at all you think it needs to go this way? Just a hair, right? No, no. It's, it's Danny. Cool. It's fine. Okay, well, we're gonna weld it. Do you we'll know how many it. people are gonna see it? Whoever many watch this video, once it's on the car, no one's ever gonna see oh, it. Oh, from this side, you it's okay. It. It's this way, but from this side, it's that way. Oh, it's for so it's... <laughs> Let's weld it. Let's weld it. We want to go home today. Oh, eventually. I tell everybody it's a job, not a career. <sighs> so you, you can see it's it's kind of gold looking. Okay, so here you said you we did... use uh, silicon bronze. Okay, silicon bronze because I, I didn't want to, you know, it just it's uh, thick and thin. The the pan is thin, and that washer was thicker, and then we still have a, even a thicker ring in there. But that but, but looks look at that, gorgeous. And then once you can, now we have a nice strong flat spot that that gasket is going to seal. Yep, we're, every we're, time we're done with the, any any problems there. Flawless. And you can see it's you know. Wow. Now it's time to finish straightening the ceiling surface before Danny tacks the windage tray back in, repairs that little crack, 
and I drop this off to get powder coated. Oh, hey, Danny. Hello. Are you installing a drain plug with an adjustable wrench? Oh, no, no this is a metric. This is a metric. Oh, that, oh, that's Danny's metric. <laughs> it's, it's a metric number 18. What is it? Uh, <laughs> stop it. Oh, my God. That, oh, goodness. Uh, all right, so. Oh. Um, we have the window tray welded back in, which Danny did once again, because I don't trust myself on that sort of welding. And now, before I bring it to get powder coated, there is an important step, and it is a leak test. We're going to leak yes. test it. And I think at the same time that we do a leak test, um, it, we have some questions. How many courses does Toyota Pan have? Ah, yes. Because mm. there's uh, another video that is currently in the works at this very moment. And that has to do with this <laughs> is part of my dipstick tube, my aftermarket dipstick tube. And this is going to be a whole nother video in and of itself. So stay tuned. But basically my massive turbo, which you can't see because it's all the way over there, uh, gets in the way of the factory dipstick tube. So I had to get this aftermarket one. Uh, this is a whole nother story though. So stay, stay tuned people, stay tuned. But um, even though uh, this comes from a very reputable and trustworthy source, we do not take anything for granted. Um, so we're gonna make sure that the oil level is actually perfect in the pan and it's below our turbo drain. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So we're just using the, the official height of a bottle of oil. Okay, so we are measuring. So right, right there. This is one full quart of uh, Yeah, solvent. that's just a bottle, it's a solvent. We're just yeah, using solvent. But we're because using this solvent as a measuring thinner device. thinner than oil. Two quarts of oil or a uh, solvent. Uh, number three. And still, no leaks. If, oh, yeah. If there was Bone a leak, dry. you would see a wet spot, right? It, instantly. Yep. I mean, it, 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 solvent will go through anything. Even when oil won't go through, solvent yep. will. So it's simulate through a real hot oil. Now we're going to check the turbo drain. I'm going to come up to it. I'm now in the drain hole. I'm now over the drain hole. How does it look? Oh, 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 oh. There's what we're talking about. See? See it? It's coming from behind it. Damn. So you know what that means? That the washer itself yes, that we're welding we welded to, to the might washer have... and that's sealed. It's getting not our weld. Our weld is tight. It's the factory, however they pressed it or whatever they do yeah. on the motor, it would have leaked. So wow, leak testing, and I we mean, wanted to figure that out before we do yep, any sort of Because now what I'm gonna do powder is, coating is I'm gonna weld around that washer to the pan. Perfect. So that way we're going to seal that. We sealed our fitting to the washer. Yep. But now we have an issue of the washer, washer. not and being not sealed a washer, to the it's pan. It's whatever Toyota, yeah. however they put it on. Yeah. And instead of doing it out here, I'm going to do it in here so that we'll just do it around there. Yeah, we don't want to see it. No. No, we can't see it now. Yay. And look, those just look a factory. Oh, those little they spots, look so factory. Because like we didn't need to overheat it or anything. That's why the silicone bronze is awesome. Wow. The factory. And then even on the inside, when I went around the outside, you know, I got to make it look good. And it had, yeah. it had all kinds of crud in there and stuff, but there, we're completely over the edge. I see nothing, it Danny. Be, it would be instant. It's not, yeah, it's not leaking at all. And it's hot. It's hot, and which means I that... I put the solvent in the, like, in there. It's not doing then anything. You'd, you'd see it instantly. Yeah. Well, it's a damn good thing we decided to do the leak test. And here is the final result powder coated, modified, and ready to go. Pizza. Oh, it's so close. Try again. Oh, you got it, Clemmy. Don't worry, I got a whole nother piece. 